It's now time to take a look at news stories making headlines around the globe today. Now, the lockdown in Lagos and Ogun states will remain in force until the 4th of May, after which selected businesses will be allowed to open in phases. These were part of the measures that were announced by President Buhari uh, last night in his nationwide address, uh, Doctor. So now, now... I will start by commending you all for the resilience and patriotism that you have shown in our collective fight against the biggest health challenge of our generation. 26 April 2020, some 3 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been recorded globally with about 900,000 recoveries. Unfortunately, some 200,000 people have passed away as a result of this pandemic. The health system and the economies of many nations continue to struggle as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Nigeria continues to adapt to these new global realities on a daily basis. Today, I will present the facts that they are and explain our plans for the coming months, fully aware that some key variables and assumptions may change in the coming days or weeks. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. Initial models predicted that Nigeria will record an estimated 2,000 confirmed cases in the first months after the index case. This means that despite the increase in the number of confirmed cases recorded in the first two weeks, the measures we have put in place thus far have yielded positive outcomes against the projections. The proportion of cases imported from other countries has reduced to only 19% of new cases, showing that our border closures yielded positive results. These are mostly fellow Nigerians returning through our land borders. We will continue to enforce land border arrival protocols as part of the containment strategy. Today, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control has accredited 15 laboratories across the country with an aggregate capacity to undertake 2,500 tests per day across the country. I have approved a phased and gradual easing of lockdown measures in FCT, Lagos, and Ogun states effective from Monday, 4th of May, 20. However, this will be followed strictly with aggressive reinforcement of testing and contact tracing measures while allowing the restoration of some economic and business activities in certain sectors. There will be an overnight curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. This means all movements will be prohibited during this period except for essential services. We will strictly ensure the mandatory use of face masks or coverings in public in addition to maintaining physical distancing and personal hygiene. Furthermore, so there we had a clip from President Muhammadu Buhari's nationwide address yesterday evening with regards to what measures uh, he has decided to take on Lagos, Ogun, the FCT and the nation as a whole. So, Doctor, I believe we're going to break this down one by one. Uh, Kano Stacey has put on lockdown for two weeks. Great move. Uh, we spoke about this yesterday. I mean, what is going on in Kano States is quite frankly bizarre. That had to be done. He is easing restrictions on Lagos, Ogun and the FCT uh, effective from the 4th of May which is on Monday. What is your take on this? 
Well, I, I'm sure we don't have enough time. I mm. mean, we can speak for one hour on this subject alone. <laughs> we sure can. First of all, let us say that there were a lot of expectations yesterday with regard to the president's speech, because it was the end of the extension that he had announced previously for Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory. Yeah. Now, did the speech meet people's expectations? I think opinion is divided in that regard. Now, but what you can say specifically is that that speech is the outcome of uh, consultations, and the president himself said so, uh, with federal government committees, consultations with the Nigeria Governors Forum, and also consultations with the presidential task force. Yeah. And so we now had a speech yesterday that is divided into three parts. In the first part, up to about 24 paragraphs, mm. you have what you can describe as a situation report. In the second part, you have guidelines uh, given by the president. And then in the concluding uh, paragraphs, you had, uh, you know, uh, what could be a commendation of traditional rulers, of religious bodies, and every other group, including the private sector, that had uh, cooperated with the uh, government. So that's in terms of structure. Certainly. However, something happened yesterday. There were two versions of the speech in circulation. Before the president spoke, there was a draft speech that had already been circulated to the media. And then eventually, when the president spoke, there were differences in terms of the paragraphs. And I think that somebody dropped the ball there. That's, That's a right. case of absolute incompetence. As someone who signed off on every presidential speech when I was in that position, when I was in that villa, I, I thought, you know, that was a mistake. Usually what we did was that you will not release the final copy until the president will be about halfway into mm. his speech, so that what the president is reading, because the president himself can adjust the speech. Yeah. And as he's uh, reading the speech, we're adjusting it, we're typing, we're correcting it. So having two different drafts, I think somebody dropped the ball. I don't know who did that, but that's a problem. Now, in terms of the content, as I told you, we don't seem to have enough time. You know, uh, the president has taken a number of measures. Do those measures meet expectations? One, Ogun State, uh, Lagos, and the Federal Capital Territory mm. would have to uh, relax the measures gradual and faced, in a gradual and faced manner, he says, uh, from uh, May 4th. Now, what does that mean in real terms? Exactly. Because further down the speech, the, pre the president says, each state governor can take a decision based on the circumstances and the realities of the state. In other words, the president tactically, or whoever wrote that speech, respected the principle of federalism, mm -hmm. that there may be certain realities that may compel certain the states, states yeah. to say we are not easing this lockdown. Now, the president talked about curfew from uh, 8 p.m. 8 PM 6 to 6 a.m. And I, I read somewhere, somebody asked the question, is it that coronavirus moves around in the night? I saw that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what is the purpose mm. of that uh, particular curfew? Now, the president also said that certain businesses, certain, certain businesses will be allowed to function. Uh, now, what are those businesses? They, they will clear. need to be identified so that people can have a sense of clarity with regard to uh, what uh, the president is saying. The president says there will be mandatory use of face masks. But he made a, an excellent point that this will be in addition to the observing of physical distancing, social distancing, mm. and also personal hygiene. Mm. And that, I think, is what, something that, uh, you know, uh, Nigerians should note very carefully. Certainly. The president, in terms of the guidelines that he, he, he gave, also said there will still be restrictions mm. on religious and social gatherings. Mm. So I hope that people will realize that even if there is any relaxation of restrictions... It's on the economy. ...in Ogun, Lagos, and FCT. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that people should you know, mm. abandon all the advisories that have been given by the Ministry of Health and the NCDC. NCDC. Mm. Now, on Kano, the president did not impose a lockdown on Kano. He merely said the state government had done so already, and that should subsist. And, you know, Kano State does not have to uh, ease restrictions from uh, May 4. 
and that's quite understandable. But as yeah. I said, we don't have enough time. Hopefully Let's later on on the show we'll be able to take perhaps, more on uh, the president's speech. Definitely, Doctor. Perhaps. Now, Ikoi is one of the most affluent areas on Lagos Island, but it hasn't been exempt from displays of poverty as the lockdown in the state continues. Doing its part to help those in need, Feed Ikoi is giving to the hungry. But that's not all. Arise correspondent Adefemi Akinsonya reports on how Feed Ikoi is empowering Nigerians during a lockdown. Fiti Koyi is an initiative started by fashion designer Ededju Thompson. He should have just finished showcasing his Lagos space program designs at Arise Fashion Week. But that event has been postponed until October due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the virus has exposed the level of hunger on the streets of Lagos. That's why they've come together to challenge that. I normally start by 7 a.m. in the morning. And before 10, I'm through with it. And it's a very stressful work, cooking. It's very stressful. You don't have time for yourself, always tired. Well, it's my part of uh, work. I have to do it. So I'm very happy. I like doing it. I also pray for people that is contributing this money to add more money so we can be able to feed those that are in need of this food. More than food, Fidikoyi is also empowering Nigerians with jobs. Like Hyacinth Batubo, who was released from prison two days before we started filming. He'd served more than half of a four-year prison sentence for assault before searching for salvation as he re-entered a Lagos far different from the one he had left behind. So I got in contact with Fidikoyi, that was two days ago. So I came looking, there's a church on this street, this is... River Road, Ikoi. So they, I was told that the church doesn't exist there anymore. So then I met Simon and I did the two like head on shows of Feed Ikoi. So I was explaining to them that please, oh, this is what happened. I just got out of prison and I'm asking for Redeem Church. So they were like, the Redeem doesn't exist here again. But what's the matter? So I explained to them. So they were like, okay, there's something going on, Feed Ikoi. You want to be part of it? I said, why, why, why? Sure. And I'm even getting paid again, and I'm getting food, and I'm getting shelter. So I think, I think it's just God working for me. And um. once the food is ready, packages are handed out to the people who need them in different parts of Ikoyi. Volunteers arrive, ready to transport food to people further away. When I saw the location of the takeoff point, which is Reeve Road, I just realized it was right around the corner for me. Um, and I mean, all I needed to do was donate some money and take some time out to share people, share food to people in my community. And I felt like that's the easiest thing I can do. And before long, an army truck pulls up, helping the team transport more food packages to the Obalende area, where social distancing is a far cry from the reality these cramped queues of men are experiencing, waiting to get what for many will be their only cooked meal of the day. Feed Ikoi leader Simon is handing packages out quickly to decongest the crowd. But as expected, there isn't enough to go around, and that reveals the hard-hitting reality of feeding the less fortunate. It's very important. Like People really rely on the meals. I met someone who here who's told me that um, they hadn't been eating in, in two days before we came. But someone would say, hey, like, you know, if you don't come, to, like, we're, this is the first time we're eating today, and I'm waiting until you come again tomorrow. So that stuff is it's very, it's, it weighs heavy on my heart, and I take that responsibility very seriously. So I'm very happy to be in a place where, you know, I can offer, like, you know, my support, you know, with my network and just a network of people in Nikoi who are, like, who are very generous with their money to help us feed people. And, you know, I just hope, we hope to, to, like, you know, do this until the lockdown is lifted. I want the legacy of what we're able to achieve to live on, but, you know, unfortunately, we won't, we won't be able to do more than that. Thereafter, as has been the case with many feeding initiatives, the idea is that life will return to some form of normalcy. But Fidi Koyi are well aware that hunger will remain roaming the streets and hope their efforts will go some way to soothing that pain. Adefemi Akinsanya, Arise News, Lagos. 
Another brilliant report there from Adefemi Akinsoya, highlighting another brilliant initiative, Feed Ikoi, helping to get food. And like she said in that report as well, their only cooked meal of the day for most people, out to a lot of people within the Ikoi area of Lagos Island. Doctor? Well, I mean, yesterday, Adefemi Akinsoya spoke to uh, the Lekki Food Bank, mm -hmm. right? And now today we have a Feed Ikoi initiative. Yes. Um, this uh, tells us something, you know. Uh, that there are many groups in Nigeria who are using their own private initiative, who are, you know, trying to intervene out of patriotism, but also, I must say, out of enlightened self-interest. Yeah. Because between Ikuyi, Victoria Island, Lekki, you still have this population of, uh, you know, um, disadvantaged persons, vulnerable persons, poor persons, who are perhaps serving the rich, either as a staff or are providing other services. So it's in the enlightened self-interest of people within these privileged uh, neighborhoods uh, to look out for people, out of patriotism, out of enlightened self-interest, also out of uh, concerns for their own security. But I think that, you know, these groups are so many. Uh, yesterday, after we played the tape by uh, Adefemi Akinsonya on the uh, Lekki Food Bank, I mean, a group you know, sent me a text message saying that there is also the People's Food Bank in Lekki, mm. uh, which is made up of uh, the Lekki, uh, what they call the Lekki Stakeholders Forum. Yeah. And I guess this is a group of landlords and concerned citizens around the Lekki access. So there will be many of those groups and as many of them uh, that we can promote as possible and uh, focus on, uh, you know, the better to encourage other people to see that it's not just about government. It's not just about saying, oh, President Buhari's uh, speech did not meet our expectations. Have to be there is also something that you two can do yeah. wherever you are, you know, as an individual, as members of a group, as members of, uh, you know, as uh, a member of a particular uh, neighborhood. So it's very good to see this brilliant report again uh, by Adifemi Akinsoya who Certainly. I believe would end up one day as an award-winning journalist. Absolutely. I completely <laughs> agree with you on that. And on that note, that is all on the news headlines. We'll take a short break now.